Good morning. Blessed morning in Jesus' name. Hope you're having a great morning today. Um, today is what December Thursday, December 10th, 2020. What a crazy this year has uh, what a crazy year this year has been so far, right? Um, today we're gonna start off with the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn Book, as we always do. And uh, we're gonna be in um Hymn number 145, It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. This song um, was written by a man who, uh, I believe, I don't know the whole story, but basically it was written by a man who, <clears throat> um, he had just lost his wife and I think his his uh, daughter and his son, or at least a child. I think he lost his wife and his child in a in a in a very tragic boating accident. Um, they died at sea. He was supposed to be on that trip, but he, but he wasn't. Um, but he had just lost them and he was very sad. And, uh, <clears throat> he was going through a lot, you know, he was going through depression and a trial and, and, uh, he said, you know what? It's well with my soul. Um, because I know that they're in good hands with the Lord. And, uh, he wrote this song. It's a beautiful song. So, uh, <clears throat> I wanted to, I thought it would uh, just fit very nicely with the message we're going to talk about today. So anyway, let's sing the song. 145, It Is Well With My Soul. <clears throat> when peace like a river attendeth my way. When sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot, thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. My sin, not in part, but the whole is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sighed. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, it is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. You know, it should be very well with our soul that uh, no matter what we're going through in our life, um, Jesus still loves us. He still died for us. And we have a home in heaven. Amen. All right, so today's opening reading is going to be from 
Uh, the New Testament, uh, the Gospel according to St. Mark chapter 14. If you have a King James Bible, you want to read along. Uh, Saint, um, excuse me, St. Mark chapter 14, verse 32. The Bible says, And they came to a place which was named Gethsemane. And he saith to his disciples, Sit ye here, while I shall pray. And he taketh with him Peter and James and John, and began to be sore amazed, and to be very heavy. And saith unto them, My soul is exceeding sorrowful unto death. Tarry ye here and watch. And he went forward a little, and fell on the ground, and prayed, that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. And he said, Abba, Father, all things are possible unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but thou wilt. And he cometh and findeth them sleeping, and saith unto Peter, Simon, sleepest thou? Couldst not thou watch one hour? Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter into, te enter into temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak. And again, and again he went away and prayed and spake the same words. And when he returned, he found them asleep again, for their eyes were heavy. Neither wist they what to answer him. And he cometh the third time and saith unto them, Sleep on now, take your rest. It is enough, the hour is come. Behold, the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise up, let us go. Lo, he that betrayeth me is at hand. The word of the Lord. Greetings, friends and colleagues, <laughs> brothers and sisters. It's Sean Elvis. Good to see you. Welcome to part five of my series, A Closer Walk with Jesus. Today, we're going to be looking at the suffering of Christ and the crucifixion of Christ in part one. Well, I'm not going to go over what we did in part one through um, four. You can go back and check those out. But, you know, today we're, we're uh, looking at Jesus Christ suffering, his crucifixion. And, you know, when I was thinking of writing this message, when I was preparing for it, I kept thinking of that movie, The Passion of the Christ, right? Which took us through the final hours of Jesus's life. And if you haven't seen that movie, go ahead and go check it out. It's a good movie. It's it's really uh, gruesome and uh terrifying uh the pain and i mean you, you feel it in that movie um but you know it's, it's accurate it's very accurate it's a depiction of the suffering of christ um even down to the language they used you know they went back and used uh, some of the original languages of of the day but anyways you know um I, before i begin you know i wanted to say this you know i got really really sick the past few days and i'm still sick um so I wasn't even sure if I was going to be able to continue this series. I mean, the devil has a way of, uh, of attacking us and trying to discourage us from uh, doing our good works for the Lord. And this time, uh, the devil, I, I believe, attacked me physically, you know, thinking that he could stop me from finishing this series or from pre preaching this message here today. But nevertheless, you know, this message continues you know i said you know what it's well with my soul if i'm sick i'm going to continue to <laughs> preach this series but anyway this message continues so uh let's keep uh getting a little closer with jesus shall we i want to start off um by focusing on this opening verse if you have a king james bible we're in we're going to be in mark chapter 14 for most of uh this message but i want to focus in on uh, that verse 38 where jesus says Watch ye and pray, lest ye enter in temptation. The spirit truly is ready, but the flesh is weak, Jesus tells us. I believe he was speaking of um, even his own flesh. Even Jesus, the flesh of Jesus, was weak. You know, he came and he embodied one of these uh, flesh, <laughs> flesh bodies made of dirt. God made us all from dirt. And uh, even his flesh got weak. He got tired. He got hungry. He got thirsty and things like that. Jesus felt emotions. 
Bible says he was sorrowful. You know, Jesus wept other times in the Bible. So Jesus had emotions. He had uh, feelings and he felt uh, the same uh, frailties we do in our body, you know. But he said, watch ye and pray lest ye enter in temptation because uh, the spirit uh, truly is ready, but the flesh is, is weak. Our flesh is really weak. It's fragile. It gets sick. From time to time, our um, our bo- our muscles ache, our our bones break. You know, we bleed if we get cut. Things like this. You know, it's fragile, it's, it's, and life is very precious. You know, and we see here also. And if you look at uh, back at verse thirty-four, um, Jesus says, "My soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death." So, again in verse thirty-six, Jesus says. Abba, Father, all things are possible unto unto uh, unto thee. Take away this cup from me. Nevertheless, not what I will, but thou wilt. You know, um, I really don't think Jesus wanted to go through with... Uh, he knew he was about to be crucified and arrested and betrayed. Um, I don't think Jesus was looking forward to it. You know, it wasn't his best day on earth. Um, excuse me. Um, but... Uh, you know, I don't think Jesus was looking forward to being betrayed and falsely arrested, accused, mocked, beaten, whipped, the whole nine yards, and ultimately killed, right? You know, but Jesus didn't want to do that, but he did it anyways. Why? Because it was God's will. He said, Father, he's, uh, if you look at verse 36, not what I will, but what thou wilt. It was God's will. God said, hey, you know, I love them so much. There is no other way. That they can be saved unless you go uh, pay for their sins, Jesus. You know, you have to die. You have to be crucified. You have to be mocked, ridiculed, rejected in order that they might be saved. And I'm sure every time that he went back over to Simon and Peter while he was praying in Gethsemane, he looked at them with so much love. You know, I could just see him just staring at them while they're sleeping. And he's up, tears in his eyes. Uh, The Bible says that he cried blood. He had bloods of blood, tears of blood running down his face, and he's just looking at him with so much love in his heart. And he says, why can't you just stay awake just a little bit, one hour? I know your flesh is weak, but Jesus told them, you know, don't worry about it. Don't get mad. He didn't get mad at him. You know, I think that sometimes uh, we can drop the ball in our lives, and maybe we're tired and Maybe we didn't read our Bible or whatever, you know. Maybe maybe we're hungry and we're so hungry we skipped prayer, right, before we ate a meal. Or or maybe we're so shy, you know, we didn't talk to that person that we should have talked to. You know, even though I think, you know, God understands that, uh, you know, our flesh is weak. You know, he went through it. He was in our own bodies. Um, but anyway, as I was getting prepared to write this message, like I said, I didn't feel good. I was sick. And I understood, yeah, you know, my flesh is weak, you know, but then I thought to myself, well, you know, uh, Jesus didn't want to get crucified either, you know, I mean, the the apostles, he told them, hey, just stay awake one hour. So I said, you know what, I can't just finish this series, right? Just finish this series for me, Sean, (laughs) just one hour, just just a few more uh, parts to this series, you'll be finished. Um. But anyway, I really wanted to complete this series for uh, for God's glory, ultimately for God's glory, but also just for myself to get closer to Jesus for myself. And um, I, I have found myself getting closer and it's amazing. But also, of course, to inspire you guys who are watching this to, uh, you can get closer to Jesus too. So, so everybody wins, right? Everybody wins. So anyway, let's look at a few things here that Jesus had to go through um, in the last moments of his life that he didn't necessarily want to go through. But he did it because it was God's will, right? He said there's no other way. So since we're already in Mark chapter 14, let's continue in verse 43. Let's read uh, verse 40, uh, starting in Mark 14, verse 43. It says, the Bible says, and, and immediately, well, he yet spake, cometh Judas, one of the twelve, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. And he that betrayeth him had given him a token, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Take him and lead him away safely. 
And as soon he, as he was come, he goeth straightway to him, and saith, Master, Master, and kissed him. So Judas comes to Jesus and gives him a kiss, which was supposed to be the, the symbol or, or signal um, to, the, to the guards who were there to arrest Jesus that, okay, this is the guy we're coming for. This is the guy we're going to arrest. But Judas, did, Judas was trying to cover himself up. He didn't want to... He didn't want anybody to see flat out that, hey, I'm pointing the finger right at Jesus. So he tried to cover it up with this kiss. And, you know, a lot of times in our lives, um, you know, there's a famous uh, phrase that says, keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Um, What am I trying to say here? Um, I'm trying to say that, you know, sometimes the people who get closest to you are actually uh, not don't have your best interest at heart. (laughs) Um, And, you know, sometimes people will do nice gestures for you, um, but really they just have their own agenda in mind and they're throwing you under the bus. But anyway, so uh, the Romans are coming here to uh, arrest Jesus. um, And one of his closest friends, his apostles, Judas, betrays him um, for 30 pieces of silver, nonetheless. You know, it doesn't say it right here. We're not going to go look at that passage, but... 30 pieces of silver was basically um, maybe the modern day equivalent of $10,000, maybe $15,000, somewhere in there. For my calculations, maybe somebody come up with a different number. But I mean, it was a lot of money, but not like that much money. I mean, would you betray your best friend? <laughs> would you betray the Son of God for just $10,000? I mean, come on. Um, I mean, what are you going to do? Go buy a car? I mean, not much you can do with 10,000 nowadays. Anyway, my point here is that sometimes people in our lives are going to betray us, even our own friends, you know, uh, the people we're good to. You know, Jesus was good to Judas, of course, and for whatever reason, usually money, right? The Bible says that um, the love of money is the root of all evil. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 10 says that. But um, the point here is that, you know, you can't stop your mission. You know, Jesus didn't just throw up his arms and, and quit and stop serving God and and say, oh, I was betrayed, you know, forget this, drop everything, I'm coming after Judas. No, 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 he stayed, his, his focus was on what he had to do. He had to, he had to suffer and, and die for our sins and go to the cross. Um, he didn't have time to uh, go after Judas. Um, that was... <laughs> That, that was the last thing he needed to do. So we need to focus on serving God. You know, whatever, even if we're betrayed, betrayed by our friends, you know, don't make it a vendetta to go back after them. And, oh, I have to get back at this person who did me wrong. You know, you stay focused on what you need to do to serve God. Um, and right now, right now, you need to determine, we all need to determine, excuse me, um, that it's going to be well with our soul, you know, because something's going to happen, you know, whether you're going to be betrayed by Jesus or your, or your family shuns you away or or your friends betray you, your wife or husband leaves you, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, whatever. You have to just say, you know what, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well with my soul, meaning like whatever I'm going through, I need to just continue to focus on serving the Lord. You know, Jesus has already basically prayed that prayer in in his prayer in in the Garden of Gethsemane. He said, you know, God, I don't really want to do this. But if there's no other way, then it's well with my soul. I'm going to go through with it because it's your will, not my will. You know, this is the... This is a good attitude that Jesus had, and this is the attitude that we should have in our lives. We need to make sure that we are serving God no matter what happens in our life. If you get sick, continue to serve God to the best of your ability. I mean, of course, there's going to be times and there's going to be those cases where, you know, you just physically can't do something, right? Maybe you can't make it to church, right? Or, or, or you've, you've tried everything you, you can possibly do and you just can't do it. That's different. That's not what I'm talking about. Because, you know, God knows everything. He knows our schedule. He knows our flesh is weak. But God also knows the intentions of our heart. So if, if you think uh, to do something in your heart, you really want to do it, but you just physically can't do it. I don't think God's going to hold that against us, right? He knows the intentions of our heart. And and the thing is, sometimes the devil will attack us, right? He'll he'll attack our body. 
um, to try to discourage us, to serve God and get us sick, you know, in various different ways. Um, he, he, he might, uh, so, but ba basically we just have to determine beforehand, before the devil attacks us that, hey, it's well with my soul. Whatever the devil comes at, uh, comes at me with, I'm going to continue to serve God. He said, well, why, Sean? Why, why should we continue to serve God? Why should it be well with our soul? Well, let me tell you this. Why would, why would it have been well with Jesus to be falsely arrested, to be crucified, to be betrayed here? Because he knew the outcome. He knew that the end result of what his goal was, was that he knew whatever the devil could possibly throw his way, all the pain and all the suffering eventually would be worth it to pay for our sins, to get that gift for us, eternal life. He wanted to give us this gift. He loved us so much. He wanted to give us a home in heaven. He said, all that pain that I'm about to go through, it's worth it. That's how much Jesus loves us. And we didn't say, you know what, Lord, I, I want to do the right thing too. You know, I want to live a righteous life no matter what it takes. If I have to um, change my lifestyle and get out of my comfort zone a little bit, maybe suffer a little persecution, go through some betrayal, whatever. It needs to, you need to say, Hey, it's well with my soul because I know that I'm, a, I'm right with the Lord. Now let's look at another verse. Uh, let's jump down to, uh, verse 66. We're still in Mark chapter 14, starting in verse uh, 66, the Bible says, and as Peter was beneath in that palace, there cometh one of the maids of the high priest. So this is after Jesus is rested. They're questioning Jesus. Peter's following closely behind. Verse 67. And when she saw Peter warming himself, she looked upon him and said, And thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied, saying, I know not, neither understand uh, I what thou sayest. And he went into into the porch and the cock crew. Let's keep reading. Um, verse 69. And a maid saw him again and began to say to them that stood by, This is one of them. And he denied it again. And a little after, they that stood by said again to Peter, Surely thou art one of them, for thou art a Galilean, and thy speech agreeeth thereto. But he again but he, or excuse me, but he began to curse and swear, saying, I know not this man of whom ye speak. And the second time the cock crew, and Peter called to mind the word that Jesus said unto him before the cock crow twice, thou shalt deny me thrice. And when he thought thereon, he wept. Now earlier in the story, we didn't read this, but Jesus foretold that Peter would deny him three times before the cock crew twice, cock crowed twice of uh, and anyway, you know, that, that's the same thing that's going to happen to us sometimes in our life. You know, we're going to constantly have to be making decisions uh, to do what's right. Do we stand with Jesus? Because look, here's the thing. Not, not all the time are people going to straight up ask you, hey, do you believe in Jesus? Right? A lot of times they won't even say anything. What usually happens is people are, are going to be partaking in some kind of sin. Some sin that may be popular. You know, in, in society, that's acceptable in society. Everybody's doing it. All your friends are doing it. And and just for the sake of an example, I'll just use drinking, drinking alcohol. Um, it's not illegal where I'm from. Um, it's, it's pretty popular. A lot of people do it. Um, and maybe some of your friends are doing it, you know. And, uh, um, and let's say, uh, I mean, the, the catchphrase nowadays is drink responsibly, right? So uh, they, they think that there's a responsible way to drink. Now look, I'm not here to preach against uh, the sin of drinking alcohol today. That's not my point. The Bible says that we're supposed to be sober. Uh, we're supposed to be vigilant. We're supposed to be watchmen. Um, now you, you can't really do that very well while you're drinking. But anyway, that's that's not my sermon for the day. But let's say that you're let's say that you're at a party and everybody's drinking, they're having a good time, all your friends are drinking and and they offer you a drink and they say, "Hey, you know, if you take a drink, um, you can you can be part of a part of our group of friends here. We'll accept you. And you know they might not come out come right out and say that. They're just going to offer you a drink, right? But you know that if I take this drink, I'll be part of them. I'll be with them. But if I don't take this drink, you know my friends are going to judge me. You know they might outcast me. They might stop talking to me about um, 
behind my back. They may stop being me, uh, being friends with me. I might not be invited to any more parties. Because in that moment, you have to decide, do I want to stand for Jesus and not take this drink? Or do I want to um, deny Jesus and take this drink? So um, uh, here, here we have another story. Uh, the first one, Judas betrays Jesus. And here's a very similar story where Peter denies Jesus. Now Judas um, betrayed Jesus, was, which is uh, different than, and than Peter denying him. There is a difference. Basically, Judas was completely throwing Jesus to the wolves. Um, he basically got Jesus killed um, all for money, you know, for, uh, because he was greedy, he was selfish. But Peter, on the other hand, you know, he just he didn't want to suffer any persecution for himself. He was trying to protect himself. Um, you see the difference where, you know, Judas betraying him, he's he's actually getting Jesus in trouble. Where Peter, he's trying to just keep himself from trouble. Uh, kind of a subtle difference, but 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 it is a difference. Oh. Now, that's not to say what Peter uh, did was okay. You know, even Peter himself knew that what he did was not okay. If you look at uh, verse 72, at the end of Mark chapter 14, um, the last words he said, and, and when he thought thereon, he wept. Peter wept. He, he said, man, I should have done that. You know, even Jesus told me this was going to happen, and I told him I wasn't going to do it, and I did it anyways. He was sorry for what he did. He did the wrong thing. So the Bible says he wept. He wept for it. He was sorry about it. Um, you know, that's how we will be too every time we deny Jesus. Uh, maybe in that moment you think you're getting away with it, but later on when 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 uh, you really think about it, um, you're gonna weep. You're gonna weep. You should weep at least. You know that you did the wrong thing. You, you denied Jesus because it separates us from Christ. And any time we're separated from Christ, we can't really have peace in our heart. But anyway, back to my sermon. You know, Judas, Judas goes on to commit suicide. Um, Peter goes on to restore his relationship with Jesus. He confesses. He repents, and of course, Jesus forgives him. But um, I wanted to. Uh, move on to the crucifixion of Jesus. So let's go on to Mark chapter 15, and let's look at verse 16. And the Bible says, Mark chapter 15, verse 16, And the soldiers led him away into the hall called uh, Praetorium, and they, call, and, and they call together the whole band, and they clothed him with purple and, and plated a crown of thorns and put it about his head and began to salute him. Hail the king of the Jews. They're making fun of him. Um, verse 19. And they smote him on the head with a reed and spit on him. The bowing their, and, and bowing their knees worshipped him. And when they had mocked him, they're mocking him, they took off the purple from him and put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. A couple things I wanted to mention here real quick. Um, before this, you know, Pilate had already interrogated him. And he determined, I didn't find anything wrong with this guy. You know, Pilate didn't necessarily want to kill Jesus. Um, but he denied Jesus. He didn't help Jesus. He didn't use his, uh, his status and his authority to uh, let Jesus free. Why? Because he wanted to save his own reputation. Kind of like Peter did, you know. He didn't want anything to do with this. He wanted to save his own status as governor. So basically, uh, he was peer pressured into killing Jesus. Sometimes... We can get into this position in our life, like I said, with the drinking example. People will peer pressure us into, into doing the wrong thing so that uh, we can maintain our status or our influence in society or, or keep our friends or, 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 you know, maybe we're afraid of losing our reputation. So, um, you know, these guards here, they were mocking Jesus, you know. They, they thought, hey, we're better than you, Jesus. We're, we're, we have more authority than you, Jesus. And... And, and, you know, that's the sad thing about the world we live in. You know, see, when we get to heaven, it won't be like that, right? The king, you know, these guys wouldn't have dared to talk to the king the way they talk to him here and mock him. Um, but we're not living in the kingdom of heaven yet. You know, we're here on earth. And, and unfortunately, these guys had more power than Jesus did here on earth. You know, not to say that they were more powerful than Jesus, of course not. But what I mean is, you know, according to earthly standards... They had more authority and status at that um, given situation. But what I wanted to point out here is, um, you know, sometimes people will look like they have more power. Like these guards appeared to have more power. But did they really? Of course not. 
course not. Jesus, Jesus could have called down legions of angels just like that. Um, so, you know, looks aren't everything, okay? People may appear to be one thing, but you don't know the heart. You know, God knows the heart. Um, so we need to make sure that we're not focusing on, on necessarily what our senses could tell us or what we see, right, with our eyes. Um, but we need to focus on, on, on doing the right thing, right? Living a righteous life. Now, these, these soldiers, they didn't have the instructions to mock Jesus, that was their own choice. They chose to mock Jesus and to spit on him. You know, Pilate didn't say, hey, go mock those guys. Go mock that man and and, 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 and spit on him and give him a crown of thorn. No, they, that, that wasn't their duty as a, as a guard, as a, as a Roman soldier. Now, sometimes in our lives, just like Jesus here, you know, people are going to abuse their power over us. Right? You may have co-workers or friends that, you know, maybe they're doing something that you know is not right. Back to that drinking example or whatever, you know. Um, but you have to decide, do I want to be right with God and 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 and, and do what uh, my friends are doing? Or, or keep my status in life or keep my job or whatever it is? You know, I mean, imagine if one of these guards would have stood up to the other guards and said, stop that, you know. And he risked his job. He, maybe he lost his job. Maybe he had to turn in his spear or his badge in his gun or whatever, right? And, and he lost his job, but he would have done the right thing. He would have been right with God. He wouldn't have had to deny Jesus. So we don't want to deny Jesus. Whatever the cost, we have to decide, hey, it's well with my soul. I don't want to deny Jesus. Not going to betray Jesus, no matter what the cost is. Um, anyway, let's look at another passage, and I'm almost finished. Um, because uh, we're going to have to go to Luke. So let's go to Luke chapter 9. Luke chapter 9. Where's my Bible? <laughs> Let's go to Luke chapter 9. Um, we're going to have to go to Luke because the next passage I'm going to look at is not in Mark. But Luke chapter 9, uh, starting in verse 22, and I just wanted to look at this real quick. Luke uh, chapter 9 verse 22 says, And the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders, the chief priests and scribes, and be slain and be raised the third day. This is Jesus way before uh, explaining um, what's going to happen. So he's prophesying of, of his crucifixion. And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. But whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. And and what is a man, uh, for what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? Whosoever shall be ashamed of me and my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and his father's and the holy angels. But I tell you the truth. There will be some standing here which will, shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of God. Now, this is so remarkable, you know, Jesus predicting his arrest, predicting his uh, his crucifixion, predicting his uh, resurrection, even on the third day. But uh, look at verse 23. This is what I really wanted to focus on. Jesus says, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. You know? Um, Jesus is telling us, hey, if you want to be a follower of me, if you want to be a Christian, you want to be a disciple of Jesus, the word disciple just means follower. You know, Jesus says, you're going to have to pick up your cross. It's not going to be easy. Okay. That means every single day, you're going to have to make a choice throughout your day. Am I going to accept Jesus or am I going to deny Jesus? Do I want to follow him or do I want to um, reject him or deny him like Peter did. You know, if we follow Jesus, we have a cross to pick up. If we deny Jesus, yeah, we may save our friend group. We may uh, save our, our status in society or our job, our fancy job, whatever, you know. But see, because sometimes the cost of following Jesus, the cost of doing the right thing, um, might cost us something here on earth that we don't want to lose. And we have to make a choice. Oh, turn over to Luke chapter 23. Luke chapter 23. I want to look at this story here real quick, and we're almost done, like I said. Um, 
where a man named Simon, this is not Simon uh, the Apostle, um, this is a different Simon, but look at uh, Luke chapter 23, verse 26. The Bible says, And as they led him away, they laid hold upon one Simon, uh, a Cyrenian, Cyrenian, coming out of the country, and on him they laid that cross, that he might bear it after Jesus. So I just wanted to point out here that, you know, um, Jesus will never make us carry our cross alone. You know, I mean, this this story here is uh, real brief. It's only one verse long, but but basically, you know, I think Jesus was beaten so much he he physically couldn't carry his cross anymore. So the guards pointed to some guy in the audience or, or who was nearby and said, "Hey, you carry his cross for him, right?" Um, but I, I just wanted to mention that you know Jesus is not going to make us carry our cross alone. A lot of the times. You know, we'll have leaders in our life or supervisors who want to just give us orders. Orders that they themselves don't want to obey, right? Or, or orders that they uh, aren't going to follow or or um, or th- uh, that they have to execute. But Jesus here, our Lord, our say, our King, our King, Jesus, um, uh, will never uh, tell us to do something or go through a trial that he didn't himself do. You know, Jesus was carrying his cross. And um, so he told us, you know, we need to pick up our cross and follow him. So um, what I wanted to say is, you know, either A, Jesus is going to help us out by carrying our cross. Or B, uh, Jesus is going before us. He's carrying our cross and leading the way. He's carrying his cross and telling us to pick up ours and follow him. You know, he's not he's not telling us to follow him um, just because he wants us to. I mean, I mean, that's what it takes to follow Jesus, right? You have to pick up your cross. Like I said, um, it's, it's, just, it's just how it is. You know, the, the Christian life isn't a bed, a bed of roses, okay? Uh, a lot of people think, oh, man, if you if you go to church on Sunday, you, you put in uh, your tithe, um, your life's going to be great. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I mean, spiritually, yeah, you're going to feel good in your soul. But but um, the thing is, is, is maybe... Uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a prosperous life, right? You're not going to necessarily have a lot of money and, and things like this. You know, following Jesus is, is um, I mean, yeah, eventually the at the end of the, uh, there is light at the end of the tunnel, right? There's redemption at the end, uh, of course. But but the point is, is um, uh, you know, you're going to have to sacrifice something. It's going to cost you something to follow Jesus. You're going to have to pick up your cross. Let's look at uh, verse 39. Uh, we're uh, we're still in Luke chapter twenty three verse thirty nine. Bible says because um, there's there's two there's two criminals being crucified right next to Jesus right alongside Jesus and and one of them's gonna mock Jesus and the other one's gonna ask Jesus for forgiveness. Okay, so Luke chapter twenty three uh, verse thirty nine. And one of the malefactors which were hanged railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost thou now fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward for our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me. In paradise, there's two types of people in the world. There's people who blame God for all their problems, and they mock God, and they say, God, if you were so powerful, if you were so loving, and you knew everything, why am I in this mess? And then there's a second type of person who says, you know what, God, you're a holy God. I'm the sinner. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Whatever I'm going through, I deserve it. But you, God, be merciful to me. You know, um, the thief here on the cross, this story here, <clears throat> is one of the greatest salvation stories that I love to share with people, you know, because um, it just it just flies in the face of what most people tell you. You know, most people tell you, hey, you have to live a good life to be saved and go to heaven. Well, this thief on the cross, he didn't live a good life. He lived a terrible life. Right? Some people will tell you, hey, you have to turn away from your sins to be saved. 
or you have to feel sorry for your sins to be saved. But, you know, in this in this story here, um, the thief on the cross, this particular thief, you know, he didn't have time to turn his life around and live for Christ, right? Um, all he did was believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved, the Bible says. You know, and, and he said, Lord, just remember me when you go to your kingdom. And I love how Jesus responds. And I love how Jesus doesn't respond. You know, Jesus doesn't respond by saying, Hey, are you sorry for what you did? You know, Jesus didn't tell him that. He didn't say, Hey, man, you lived a wicked life. You didn't change your lifestyle around. You lived a lifestyle full of sin. You're doomed, buddy. <laughs> you should have cleaned up your life. You should have picked up your cross. No. Jesus said what? He said, Whosoever... Believeth in me should not perish, but have everlasting life. The thief on the cross said, I believe. And Jesus said, what? Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. Not in purgatory, paradise, heaven. He said, look, thief, the moment you breathe your last breath, the moment you die on that cross, you know what? You're going to be with me in paradise, because I'm dying for your sins here right now, today. And if you believe on me, you're saved. And that's the that's the real gospel. The real gospel isn't turn away from your sins to be saved. It's believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. This thief on the cross didn't have time to turn from his sins. He was in agony on the cross, dying. And Jesus said, you believe in me? You believe that I'm dying for your sins right now? Yes, Lord, you're saved. I'll see you in paradise. <coughs> excuse me friends you know maybe you're not picking up your cross daily right maybe there's more you could be doing for god there always is right there's always more we could do for god <coughs> excuse me but at the very least you know don't be like the first thief on the cross don't mock jesus don't make any excuses why you can't serve god because there will always be an excuse the devil always have an, has an excuse up his sleeve um, but we need to be like the second thief on the cross. We need to say, you know what, Jesus, it's well with my soul. I deserve whatever I got coming to me because I'm a sinner. But you don't deserve to be denied. You don't deserve to be crucified by the Jews. You don't deserve to be mocked by the guards. You don't deserve to be uh, denied by Peter or betrayed by Judas. You know, you know what our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ deserves? Praise. He deserves praise. Every second, every moment of our lives, you know, he went through all the pain and all the suffering. I mean, if Jesus can go through all that without having deserved it, like the th even the thief recognized, he said, he said uh, here in uh, uh, verse 41, this man hath done nothing amiss. He didn't deserve it. You know, um. If Jesus can go through all that pain and, and, and suffering, having not done anything wrong, surely, surely we should be able to say, you know what, it's well with my soul, you know. Um, don't, don't be afraid to just go through a little suffering, a little pain a little, for Jesus, for doing the right thing, you know. That, that's basically my message for the day, guys. I don't want this message to go too long. Um... But, you know, the devil, he's going to have, he's going to come to us in various ways. He may attack your health like he did me this past few days, you know, and try to get you to put your cross down. He may use your own family, your own friends to pressure you to lay down that cross. He may threaten you. Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to take away your job. I'm going to take away your status. I'm going to, I'm going to have people mock you and betray you. Don't put down your cross. Just say, hey, you know what? It's well with my soul. It's well with my soul because one day I will be in paradise with the Father in heaven. That's what awaits me. So do, do your worst, devil. Because salvation, going to heaven, going to paradise with Jesus is, is not based on how well we live our lives. You know, well, we should live a good life. It's based on, do you believe on the Lord? Are you the second thief on the cross? Are you the first thief? Are you going to blame God? Are you going to mock God for your problems? Are you going to say, you know what? Have mercy on me, Lord. Have mercy. And it's well with my soul. You know, that's that needs to be our uh, our attitude, right? That uh, 
It should be reason enough that uh, to pick up our cross, to live a good life, and to do what Jesus says that, uh, that we believe. That Jesus uh, paid for our sins on the cross. Amen? Anyway, that's my message for the day, guys. You guys um, have a blessed day in Jesus. Thank you for listening uh, to part five. And tune in uh, next time for part six. Um, until then, you know, no matter what the devil throws at me, he's going to have to kill me to get me to stop finishing uh, this series. Amen. Um, our King, Jesus Christ, suffered and died. and uh, But he's coming back. He's coming back. Our King will, will return. And uh, he, let's uh, hope he finds us when he returns um, faithful to him. And let's, we're going to have to make sure that everything's well with our soul. In order to do that, we're going to have to pick up our cross daily. Anyways, God bless you guys. Thank you for listening. And um, as always, I'm going to close in prayer, and then uh, we're going to give God the last word. So if you want to read along, uh, we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, if you want to read along. Thanks for listening, guys. God bless. Have a great day in Jesus. Let's bow in prayer. Oh. Whew. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, all glory to you for helping me get through this message and Lord, helping all of us to get through all of our trials in our life. Um, Lord, we thank you so much for um, going through all the the pain and, and the suffering that you went through, Lord. Um, I didn't even cover but a fraction of it today, Lord. I couldn't even imagine all the uh, humiliation and the pain and suffering and that you had to endure uh, to pay for my sins, all of our sins, Lord. Uh, I... Can't thank you enough for that, Lord. We'll praise you uh, for all eternity for that, Lord. I just ask that you um, help help us be more courageous, Lord. It's not easy to pick up our cross every day, like you told us to. And um, even our cross, even though our cross is not nearly as heavy as yours, Lord, it's it's still not easy because our our flesh is weak, and you know some of us have more faith than others, but most of us are of little faith, Lord, compared to the faith you had. And I just ask that you give us more faith, Lord. And you use this message to uh, encourage um, the people who listen to this message to uh, have more faith, to say that it's well with their soul and to pick up their cross and follow you, Lord. And uh, Father, I ask that you show us any areas of our life that uh, we may need to improve on and, and uh, take a stand for you. And uh, Lord, I'm sorry for the times in the past that we may have denied you, like Peter did. But uh, just give us the Holy Spirit to comfort us, Lord. And and uh, whatever the d devil throws at us, um, we want to follow you. Uh, we want to be your disciple, Lord. Uh, we love you. We thank you so much for everything you've done, all the pain and suffering that you endured for us, Father. And uh, I ask that you bless us and bless this message and bless the listener um today and until we all meet with you together in paradise we love you lord in jesus name i pray amen amen god bless you guys thanks for listening as always god's gonna have the last word first corinthians chapter 15 uh verses 35 through 58 have a great day guys have a great day <clears throat>or some other grain. But God give it but God giveth it a body, as it hath pleased him, and to every seed his own body. All flesh is not the same flesh, but there is one kind of flesh of men, another flesh of beasts, another of fishes, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial, but the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. There is one glory of the sun, and another glory of the moon, and another glory of the stars. And for one star differeth from another star is glory. 
So also is this it so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, it is raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was a living soul, and the last man was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. The first man was of the earth, earthly. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As is the earthly, such are they that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment. And the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall be shall have put on incorruption, and this and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain. Amen. Amen.